Amazing to be in the presence of God. Those who couldn't make it last night, we had a blast last night, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and I'm not making you feel bad, but you know, please do watch the service online, you know, you know, please do watch it, and I'm sure you will be blessed. A lot of you couldn't come because you're sick, but you know, God's presence was so amazingly present among us, hallelujah, praise God. And you know, we had, we had, we had, we had this, this amazing time to be in the presence of God. I wouldn't want to welcome all those who are here. Praise God. Good to see, good to see the Libyan family all the way from Chicago. Thank you for coming. And I, I pray that your family be blessed. You know, Bomik and them from Niagara Falls. Good to see you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Those who are coming here, we welcome you. We love you. We want to honor you. Praise God. And I want to say one thing, you know, praise God. Actually, we have arranged lunch just for you. So because of you are here, we've arranged a lunch so you can eat and we also can eat together. So please stay back. Please stay back and have a fellowship lunch with us. Isn't it? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So stay back and we can have fun together, talk together, you know. Anything that we can pray for you after the church, do let us know and we will love to pray for you. Love to pray for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. We believe that God has a plan and purpose for you, even for today while you're being here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we ready? Hallelujah, praise God. Come on, four people are ready. I can work with that. Okay, praise God. Can we have more people ready? Are we ready? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, lift up your Bible in the presence of God, and you're going to proclaim by faith. Hallelujah, proclaim by faith. Hallelujah, proclaim by faith. Hallelujah. Let's say it together. One, two, three. I believe what God is, the Word of God is. What God can do, the Word of God can do. God's Word is God's will, and God's will is God's Word. Therefore, I have what the Bible says I can have. I am what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Bible says I can. I present my body as a holy and living sacrifice. Lord Jesus has given me the spirit of power, love and sound mind. I cannot be confused or defeated. I have the mind of Christ and Jesus has made me holy and righteous. I am dead to sin and alive to God. Holy Spirit, help me and speak to me. I choose to receive God's word as bread for today and as seed for tomorrow. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, Jesus doesn't want you to be same as well. Isn't it? And when you say, Lord, I don't want to be the same. I want to be transformed. I partner with Lord Jesus Christ that I'm going to be changed being in the presence of God. You know, do you, uh, you know, it's a simple story, even if you have not read the whole Bible. Simple story, if you read the Bible, in the Bible, whoever came with Jesus, they got changed. They were changed. What happened? Jesus happened. You know, Jesus happened. They just encountered Jesus Christ and they were changed. Hallelujah. I know 2023, it was a progressive year for a lot of us. Hallelujah. And we got changed. And 2024 is also a year where God will still transform us and make us more like Lord Jesus Christ. I am expecting that. Are you expecting that? See, it's easy to expect miracles. It's easy to expect healing. It's easy to expect, you know, breakthrough. Easy to expect life partners. Hallelujah. But let us expect that God will transform me in 2024. God will make me more like Jesus Christ. My mind will be renewed. My thought process, my action, my desires will be renewed according to God's plan and God's purpose. Are we there? Is it the, is it the tight suit or the sari just causing you to feel sad about it? You can smile. Somebody say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, smile like you never smiled. <laughs> See, some people it is hard to do because they have never done it, isn't it? <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can smile in the church, right? Jesus is, Jesus is fun. Isn't it? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God has laid out certain things very specifically on my heart for this Sunday, for this Monday and this year. And, and it will be different kind of a sermon. We're going to read a lot more Bible and we're going to just receive it. It's more like that. I'm going to do just a little bit of teaching. In between. Are we okay with that? Yes. It's easy. It's, it's good. We're going to read the Bible, okay? No, nothing else, okay? All right. So we, we should be okay. So this is what I'm going to say. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 2024. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I want, to, I want to announce and declare that let 2024 be the year of God's presence. Somebody say year of his presence. Year of, his presence. Year of God's presence. So, you know, see, I'm, I'm, I'm asking more. I'm not asking little. You know what it is? Hallelujah. Because in the presence of God, there is healing. In the presence of God, there is provision. In the presence of God, there is joy. In the presence of God, there is peace. In the presence of God, all plans of God become accessible to us. 
So why would I ask for one thing when I can have everything because of the presence of God? Hallelujah. See, maybe, maybe some of us, this term is new. Uh, sometimes we say, God is everywhere. Uh, for sure God is everywhere. Hallelujah. But God doesn't work everywhere. Are we there? God doesn't move everywhere. God doesn't heal everywhere. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we talk about the presence of God, it means an atmosphere where God is manifested, felt, and experienced. Where you would know God is here. Remember, remember that Joseph is walking through this place and he comes to this town called Paniel and he says, surely God is here. Surely God is here. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I hope that when you walk into the century, you felt that God is here. Amen. Again, four people, but that's okay. We can work with it. Okay. Is it the 11 o'clock time doesn't work with us or is it 9.30? We should like move it 9. Okay. All right. Uh, have you experienced the presence of God when you walked in? Okay, 15, that's good. We can still work with it, okay? Have, okay, this side, okay. Uh, have, even if you come late, you can still experience the presence of God. <laughs> Is it? Have you experienced the presence of God when you walked in? Yes. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you. So I pray that this year will be a year of God's presence. Somebody say God's presence. Okay, simple message, three things God spoke to me, and that's what I'm going to share with you, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read some Bible passage, hallelujah. Let's read Psalm 133. I'm going to read from Passion Translation. It's the longest psalm. You know, so many verses, we can all read it, hallelujah, praise God, okay? Thank you. Okay, this is what it says, Psalm 133. It says, how, is it Passion? Yes. How truly wonderful and delightful it is to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity hallelujah some translation says sweet harmony hallelujah unity is always sweet biblical unity is always sweet let me just put it that way okay biblical unity is always said why we are talking about this on newer day listen to this what the next verse says hallelujah verse number two says it is which is unity it is as precious as the sacred scented oil. Let me tell you, anointing oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron, dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robe. Imagine a picture that Aaron, the anointing oil has been poured out upon his head. Not this Aaron, that Aaron, okay? We, how many errands in the house? Three errands in the house. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We need to bring some Moses in now as well. Okay? <laughs> No pharaohs allowed though. <laughs> Praise God. Good joke. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, when Aaron was anointed, you know, it was, you know, in the church we apply a little bit of oil, which is good. But they, they used to open the, the, pour down the whole flask or all the horn of oil over the high priest. And, and that oil pres represented the presence of God. All represented the anointing of God. All represented the selection of God. All represented that God has blessed somebody. Hallelujah. You know, Samuel went to David and says, he anointed David with the oil. Are we there? Hallelujah. When Saul was appointed as a king, you know, he was anointed as again, again anointed. Hallelujah. And that's why when Jesus walks on the earth, Jesus, there was no formal anointing. That's why Jesus opened the scroll of Isaiah and says, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me. Hallelujah. Praise God. But in this passage it says, when brothers and sisters are together, there is anointing. Okay. This is a, actually a wow moment, but that's okay. I'll work with that as well. Okay. When brothers and sisters are together in biblical unity, there is anointing. Anointing. Anointing is a pretty precious thing, you know. A lot of people run after anointing, but we forget to figure out how the anointing works. It says, when brothers and sisters are together, there is anointing. And this anointing, like not any other anointing, but anointing that was upon Aaron. This oil flows from his garments all the way down. A dripping oil, which is the presence of God. Hallelujah. Be with me. Hallelujah. The verse number three says something like that. Hallelujah. Thank you. This harmony can be compared from the dew dripping from the Mount Hermon, which flows down the Mount Hills of Zion indeed. Okay, now listen to this. Verse number one says, brothers dwell together in unity. Where there is unity, there is anointing. Now third thing it says, where there is anointing, Yahweh has decreed his blessings. blessings. Hallelujah. Ha Yahweh has decreed his 
blessing over it hallelujah praise god first word for 2024 first word for 2024 first word for 2024 grow together and because when you grow together it becomes a year of anointing hallelujah see sometimes we 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 want anointing but we don't know how to get anointing so i'm giving you a key god is giving you a key hallelujah how to get and grow in the anointing in 2024 it means to grow together Amen. somebody say grow together. grow together hallelujah praise god thank you jesus hallelujah and and this is this is amazing it is simple hallelujah praise god john chapter 17 and verse number 11 says something like that hallelujah now i'm no longer in the world but these people are in the world. He's talking about these 12 disciples. And he's talking to God the Father. Jesus is talking to Daddy. And he says, I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me that they... Okay. Every eye is on the screen. Okay. Every eye is on the screen. Okay. What's the last part? We're going to read it together. One, two, three. They may be one... As we are. Wow. Jesus is praying that all of my people will be one. They'll be united. How they'll be united? He does not give any comparison. He does not say, no, you know, Pelana Chokra. He says, as we are one, Jesus, Father, and the Holy Spirit is one. Let them be one. Are we there? See, when Jesus, Father and Holy Spirit operates, you cannot know when Father stops and Jesus starts working. You don't know when Jesus stops, the Holy Spirit starts working. And they work in syncing and harmony with each other, so much so that you can say, God has done this. Isn't it? Isn't it? See, if you, if you give credit to Jesus for what God has done, Father is not upset. Okay, let me say it again. Okay, let me say it again. If God the Father does something for you, and you give credit to Lord Jesus Christ, Father is not upset. If you did something, and somebody has the got the credit, if we are un, if we are one, we are not upset. Are we there? Isn't it? We are not upset. Because the most important thing, the work was done. Are we there? See, we live in a society where it is all, it's, you know, we want identification, recognition, you know, award. Jesus is saying, let them be one. Let them be one. one. See, we come up with this theology, uh, I, when I'm trying to say, we come up with this understand to theology, this is God the Father, this is God. But, you know, when God operates, they operate as one. They operate as one. Hallelujah, praise God. The way, you know, in 2024, hallelujah, praise God. God is saying, I want to bless you with anointing. But I want you to tell you that start walking in biblical unity. Start walking in biblical unity. Hallelujah. Unity between husband and wife. Unity between the family, unity between the brothers and sisters, unity between the church. Hallelujah. Because where there is unity, that's where there is anointing. Hallelujah. See, I, I've learned that if there is no anointing, we can close the shop down. Because no matter how hard we try, it's not going to work. We can only operate through anointing. Are we there? You see, see it, was, it, it, it will become like a dead religion, isn't it? I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm just talking about just dead, dead religion if there is no anointing. You know, you just come together and you, know, you read and you accept. Nothing changes. Life is not changed. Nobody is healed. Nobody is transformed. You know, nothing happened. No demons are cast out. Nothing. In fact, they are enjoying because there is no anointing. Hallelujah. But where there is anointing, hallelujah, there is healing. Where there is anointing, there is life. Where there is anointing, there is power. Where there is anointing, there is deliverance. Where there is anointing, there is victory. Where there is anointing, that's where we can save souls and win many from Christ for Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The prerequisite is, hallelujah, it's good for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. unity. Somebody say unity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, this is your message. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Praise God. What biblical unity is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Let me tell you what biblical unity is not. You know, are, are we there so far? So, so if you if you've read the Bible last year, you would know this. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, Joseph's brother. How many brothers he had? 
11. They were all united to kill Joseph. That's not unity. Isn't it? That's not unity at all. Isn't it? You know, you know, you know, when, when Moses went onto the Mount Sinai to get this law from God, you know, the entire Israel was united behind Aaron to build a golden calf and say, this has brought us out of Egypt. That's not unity. That's not unity. Are we there? Isn't it? Praise God. The, 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 the ten spies were very united against the two spies saying, we should not go to the promised land because this is too difficult for us. It's not unity. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this, 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 even David's men, they were, they were united to kill King Saul. It's not unity. Isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, the Jews that came together to stone Stephen. I was said the whole city came together. They were so united they wanted to kill Stephen. That's not unity. Are we there? See, unity is what that fulfilled the plan and purpose of God through people who are involved in. That's what unity is. Are we there? Unity doesn't mean you agree with everything. Unity means you speak the truth and people agree together what biblical truth is. Book of Acts chapter 1 says, Hallelujah, they were all gathered together, together, praying in one house. Are we there? I think that's the most popular prayer meeting ever. 120 showed up. 120 people. I, I wish to have that prayer meeting, isn't it? Kick so weas loko ayahoy. Isn't it? You know, if you don't like people, host prayer meeting. Nobody will come. Isn't it? But if you host prayer meeting with dinner, you have a little bit more chance. <laughs> praise God. Thank you. We can talk about it before we start fasting, isn't it? <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Bible says when they were all gathered together, hallelujah, Holy Spirit showed up. The anointing came like never before. And these people who were uncultured, uneducated, start speaking in tongues, hallelujah. And not only they were supernaturally empowered to perform signs, wonders, healings, and miracles. And Bible says, these people had taken over the city, hallelujah. And the whole city was shaken because these 12 people were filled, 120 people were filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened, hallelujah? The anointing came. Are we there? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. True biblical unity is the unity of David and Jonathan. Isn't it? You know, it's called covenant relationship. We don't do that anymore. But you know, old time, you know, I, I know my pastors and mentors, they would have friends and they were family members. They would come in covenant relationship. You know what covenant relationship? They would sit together and say, I'm making covenant with you. No matter what happens, our friendship will not end. I know, what that means. I know that. You don't know it. Yes, you don't know it. Sorry. Uh, you know? And they will come together and say, no matter what happens, our friendship will not end. I have full accountability towards you. You have accountability towards me. I can correct you. You can correct me. Nobody will get offended. Isn't it? Are we there? That's what a covenant relationship looks like. We don't do that anymore, isn't it? I'm not saying why we don't do it. We should do it because we need to be accountable to people. We need to be accountable to people into our lives. We need to be accountable to leaders. We need to be accountable to life partners. We need to be accountable to one another. Are we there? You know, praise God. I want to tell you, you if you want your household to be blessed, pray for, pray for married unity. Yes. When, I, when I'm saying that, you know, somehow, you know, a lot, lot of you are Gujarati. I'm just going to use some Gujarati things. Mother follows Jesus. Father, let mother follow Jesus. Usually, usually, usually. Mother reads Bible. Father is usually. Why? Let me tell you. And then, because of that, children may or may not follow Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of couples are here, isn't it? Doesn't matter how many years you've been married, six months or 60 years, does not matter. But when you get together as a couple, and you say, we're going to pray together, we're going to have unity in our marriage, I tell you, the anointing will flow in your family. Your children will not have not, no choice but to follow Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have come together. Hallelujah. You pray together. You build that prayer altar. Hallelujah. Praise God. So to have, to have Isaac, you need to be Abraham and Rebecca. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
Sarah, isn't it? Praise God. Need to have biblical unity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God wants a future generation. See, a lot of couples pray for future generation, but then there is no prayer unity. You know? One pray for one thing, another pray for another thing. Their prayer is fighting in the, within the roof, doesn't even go to God. Isn't it? Pray together. Are we there? You know, read your Bible together. Take communion together. Hallelujah. That's what unity is meant for. If you're a family, make sure, make sure. You know, I, know, I know kids grow up and then they're all different direction. Make sure whenever you are all in the home together, make sure you have prayer and worship altar together. Because where there is anointing, when there is unity, there is anointing. Amen. There is anointing. There is anointing. I want to tell you, each family that is represented here, whether you believe it or not, I, I, you know, it does not matter. Hallelujah. God has a plan and purpose to have anointing flowing into your life through this biblical unity. Amen. Let 2024 be a year that you experience God's anointing into your presence, into your house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse number three also says, where there is unity, God also proclaim the blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God proclaims the blessing. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. Are we there? Are we ready to pray? We're going to pray and prophesy as well. Isn't it? Praise God. By faith. Pray and prophesy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Yes. So it's written there. You know, if you want to just read it together, we can do it together. But when you do that, believe it by faith because without faith, you cannot get anything. Isn't it? While putting your hands in the pocket and laugh at it, you cannot get anything. Isn't it? When you believe with your heart and pray, then you get it. Okay? So I'm going to pray. If you want to join with me, you can pray as well. Isn't it? Praise God. Lord, I pray and receive your anointing and blessing for the year 2024. We receive unity revival among us. Unity in families and unity in church. I receive the grace to grow together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I receive the grace to grow, to grow together in Jesus' name. You know, uh, we can have screenshots. You can pray for your family when you go home as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Grow together. Hallelujah. Second, second word that God has given to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. First one, grow together. Second one is gather and give. Somebody say gather, gather. And, give. and give. Isn't it? Usually those, don't, those, those two don't go together. We gather and we sit on it. But, but today's word is gather and give. Gather and give. give. And I'm going to read this passage from 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. Hallelujah. You know this passage. Hallelujah. But we're going to learn something that God taught me uh, very recently. Then the word of the Lord came to him, who is Elijah, saying that, Yes, please. Next. Okay. Arise and go to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. God has what, what he has done? Commanded. commanded a widow. Does God doesn't know widow's bank balance? No, I'm asking. I'm asking. Not, either he knows it. That poor lady doesn't have anything. But God says, I have still commanded that widow to provide for you. Are we there? I want to tell you if, you, if you want to know God, I want to tell you one characteristic of God. He does things unusually. He will do things outside your box. He will do things that you did not expect him to do. He goes to this widow who doesn't have anything. He says, I command you to pray for my, provide for my servant. The servant is feeling guilty. That lady doesn't have anything. But God says, go there, go to this lady who doesn't have anything, and she'll take care of you. Wow. <laughs> praise God. Let me tell you backstory, what has happened here. Okay, backstory. Are we there for the backstory? Okay, praise God, because we don't have a chance to read all this. So what has happened? Elijah, the servant of God, has pronounced drought or famine onto this land, and say, Ahab, you disobeyed God, no rain. No rain for you, till I say again, there is no rain. So number one thing, it says no rain. So there's no rain, the city and the nation has no rain. It's drought, it's famine, there's no food. So what God does, God, God says, uh, Elijah, go to this brook of Sherith. So Elijah goes to brook of Sherith and says, live there. So Elijah lives there. He lives by the brook of Sherith. If you don't understand what brook means, it's a small river or a small stream of water. He lives there. And the Bible says he drank water from the brook of Sherith. You know, you cannot survive and drink. You need food. So the Bible says in the morning, somebody say in the morning yeah. and in the evening. The ravens would come. Ravens means kagla. They will come. Isn't it? It was kagla. Actually, it was not a person. Isn't it? They would come and they would bring bread and meat for Elijah. What? 
a raven would come I, it blows my mind how is that possible a raven may as well eat it but he is carrying the bread in the beak to give it to elijah then another one comes he carrying the piece of meat in his beak to give it to See, if God can order the birds of the air to take care of his servant, wouldn't get ordered things into the world to take care of you and me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to trust him more in 2024. Amen. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So Elijah comes every day in the morning. See, God is also nice, isn't it? If he only gives bread, Elijah will survive. But meat is a plan of God. <laughs> and when we eat it, we fulfill the plan of God. <laughs> into our lives isn't it so he brings meat as well and i believe i believe what it the meat was that's my that's the revelation that i got it is medium rare steak triple a you know center cut loin 100% that's what he's bringing isn't it and elijah is enjoying it and the bible says hallelujah it was going on and the time came that this brook dries up hallelujah brook dries up elijah may think you know god says stay here but there is no water the word of god says elijah now get up there was one area of provision I give it to you that you will trust the ravens that can provide for me. Now that season is over. I'm going to bring you a different season where there's a different levels of provision. A widow will provide for you. If I am Elijah, I would feel super guilty to eat this widow's food. Isn't it? But Elijah said, go. But let me tell you, the story is not about Elijah. The story is about widow. And that's what we're going to learn today. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's, let's read that passage quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, verse number, this verse number eight, uh, 10. Okay. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to this gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. Then he called to her and says, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. He's just trading slowly. Eh? He doesn't say, I'm going to eat. So he said, okay, let's try with the water. If it works or not, then this is the widow. So he said, bring me some water. So this lady said, definitely. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, please also bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. He said, bring me, you know, the whole grain, you know, oatmeal bread, isn't it? Healthy one, isn't it? We're going to oil it brown bread, you know, first, first month of January, isn't it? And then we're going to again go back to what we eat, okay? <laughs> but thank God for brown bread for January, isn't it? Okay. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have any bread. Only a handful of flour, a bin, a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and I just said, got it for me. One meal, second meal, we might not have it. We're going to die out of it. Okay. Now, now, now listen to this. God ordains provision for Elijah. And Elijah need to have faith to believe this, that this is the widow. This is the widow. He says, I don't have any food. He said, Lord, you commanded her. You know, she should have a red carpet for meat, five, you know, five course meal, everything ready. But she doesn't have any of those things. So she, Elijah has to trust God. So what Elijah does, hallelujah, praise God. Elijah said, don't worry. You know, do as you said, but before that, make me a small piece of bread. So listen to this. You know, Elijah may sound insane. This lady say, Elijah, I'm going to eat a little bit. I'm going to die. I said, don't worry, don't worry. Bring me a bread. You're not listening. Like, so rude. You're not, I'm going to die, I'm saying that, because there's not enough. I said, bring me bread. You know? Like sometimes food does things to people, isn't it? They don't know what is happening around them. Is it? So I said, bring me a cake first, and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. So now, that this time, Elijah has not prophesied anything. It's a statement of faith for Elijah. It is also a faith, it will require a lot of faith for this widow to have even this conversation. The next thing Elijah says, hallelujah. Now what will happen if you bring it to me? Now listen to this very carefully. Listen to this word. Pay attention to these words. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry. It means you'll always have flour, you'll always have oil. But can I tell you that's not the blessing? Until, until, until Lord sends the rain. Are we there? I, God corrected me. I've been praying for Lord, let the flower do not run out, let the oil rot run out. God said that's a drought blessing. That just survive you through drought season. Are we there? Are we there? 
But 2024 is no longer a drought season. All right? It's a season of rain now. So we don't have to worry about oil and flour running out because the rain is coming. Are we, are we there? Is that it? We need oil, we need flour when there is drought, when there is famine, when there is no finances, when there is no resources, when there is nothing happening into our life, we want our limited resources to go a long way. But when there is rain, we don't need limited resources because there is abundance already. Are we there? If anybody believe by faith, 2024, hallelujah, the Lord is saying hallelujah, it will be a year of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. You know, you've been praying for, let my oil do not run out. Let my flower do not run out. God says, don't pray. Pray that, Lord, they let there be an abundance of rain. Let there be an abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Let there be an abundance of rain. Somebody lift up the, high, lift up the hand. I says, Lord, then let there be abundance of rain in my life. Let there be abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let there be abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Pray and prophesy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer point number two. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray. And we can read that and together. Lord, I pray and receive your abundance of your rain for the year 2024. Year of rain of favor, rain of prosperity, rain of blessing, rain of harvest. I receive the grace to gather and give in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I kept it specifically gather and give. You know why? Because until that widow give, she did not, she did not got anything. She gathered the sticks to give it to somebody. She cooked the meal to give it to somebody. She worked hard to give it to somebody. Are we there? You know, I'm going to say with a lot of grace right now. You know, we have forgotten giving. We have forgotten giving. Mainly because of two reasons. Number one, because we love money. Second thing, there is a lot of false teaching around it. Sometimes we've been told that tithe is done away with. Tell me a one verse that says tithe is done. I could not find it. I know I'm not a scholar, but I know you would know it. Couldn't find any verse that tithe is done away. Are we there? <laughs> Nobody is quiet. You know, one way to make the church quiet, talk about money. And that was quiet in heaven for, in heaven for 30 minutes. I think there was a sermon about money, isn't it? Nobody talked. Okay, praise God. Somebody say giving. giving. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Are we there? Tell your neighbor, tight. tight. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, no, I, 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 I usually don't, I, I'm, I'm not good at buttering people up, isn't it? But a lot of people who are sitting here, they don't have great jobs, but they're faithfully tight. And they've experienced the abundance of blessing into their life. May not be represented in a financial breakthrough. But their spirit has been well fed. Their soul has been well fed. Even the difficult time they've experienced peace and joy of God. Why? Because they have gathered and give. Amen. It's like this widow. You know, widow will have just enough till the rain comes. So for those who are faithfully giving, I want to proclaim this blessing over you. Even you did not have enough, but you still gave. And Lord made your flower to be remain there, oil to remain there. But the Lord is bringing new season of your life where the abundance of rain is coming and you and I shall have plenty. Plenty, hallelujah. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Can I say also something? Something else? Are we going to talk about tithe? Yes. Usually tight subject is, is reserved for visiting pastors. Isn't it? Because even if you got offended, he's not there next Sunday. Isn't it? Right? If you don't give tight, start giving tight. Are we there? Okay. It's not a tight teaching. We're going to do it on a second or third Sunday. But let me give you one, one quick formula because I want you to be blessed. And that's why I'm saying God said, I said, God, I'm not going to talk about that. God said, no, talk about tight so they can be blessed. I want you to be blessed. You know, let's say if you, not today, today because we're going to provide you lunch here, but let's say you know, tomorrow you go to Osmos. You know, order that delicious lamb shawarma. You know, whether you like it on the sticks or on the rocks, doesn't matter. Isn't it? With a lot of tahini, isn't it? Hummus, a little bit of sumac on it. You order it, you start eating it. Then you get up and go to the Burger King and pay for it. Can you do that? Why you cannot do that? You can pay where you eat. You pay where you eat. You pay 
where you are satisfied. You pay where you are filled. You pay where your soul is nurtured. You pray where you've been growing. You pay, hallelujah, praise God, wherever, wherever God blesses you. I'm going to just leave it right there. Isn't it? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This lady gave, hallelujah. And sometimes a lot of preaching has been done. You know, oh, the flower did not run out. This oil did not run out. But I want to tell you, she gave. You know, she gave. Let's say she made a three loaf. There was three loaf. One was for Elijah. One was for herself. And one was for her son. How much she gave? Yeah. How many percentage the mathematicians in the... 33.33333%. Isn't it? She didn't have anything, yet she gave one third. And my Bible says, the flower never ran out, and the oil never ran out. Hallelujah. If you want to have experienced the abundance of blessing in 2024, make sure you give where you eat. Hallelujah. Praise God. And also, I want to say with humility, if you are already giving the tithe, you know, I cannot be proud about it. You know why? Because... I'm supposed to give it to him anyways. It's not mine. Bible says, tithe belongs to the So I can say, hey, I give it tithe. It doesn't matter. You know, if you owe somebody, you give it to them. You cannot boast about it. You can never boast about it. Isn't it? Are we there? Okay. Second blessing I want to say, hallelujah, praise God. Gather and give. Somebody say, gather and give. Hallelujah. When you gather and give, it will become a year of abundance. Hallelujah. Year of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Now, third thing, we're going to read a little longer passage. Hallelujah. Little longer passage, hallelujah. Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse number one onwards. Ezekiel 47, hallelujah. Haskiel, isn't it? Praise God. I like it in Gujarati better. Is that? And he says, This is the Spirit of the Lord enters his life and his body and says, The Spirit of the Lord brought me to the back door of the temple. I said, This is not a physical temple because there is no physical temple on the earth. God brought Ezekiel in a vision into a heavenly temple. Are we there? Or a new Jerusalem, if I say that. Praise God. If you don't believe that, it's in your Bible. In the book of Revelation, it's there. Yeah? Praise God. So he brings him into a temple and says, There was water flowing under the threshold of the temple towards the east. See, Bible says, you know, book of, book of Psalms says, You know, uh, you know uh, uh, there's a throne of God. This is a, there's a river that goes from the throne of God. Somebody say river. From the throne. You know, from the throne, there's a river flows. The river flows. You know, I, I'm so much looking forward to how does it look like. But there's a river flowing. So he says, God showed me this river. He said, and the river is like flowing towards the east side. And the Bible says, the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple to the south of the altar. You know, if you still learn Dabe Jamne, this might not make sense. But it is the directions. Then he says, he brought me out by the way of the north gate, led me around and outside other gateway, and he just brought me to so many places. Okay, next, next verse. Okay. And he says, okay. Uh, he brought me through the waters, the last part says. And the waters came to my ankles. Somebody say ankles. You know, when you stand in an ankle deep water, you cannot say I'm wet. You know, you say I experience, I'm touching water. I know what water feels like. You can say it's hot, it's cold, whatever it is, isn't it? We have experienced the coldest water when we give baptism to somebody, isn't it? And you remember it, isn't it? Because it's so cold, isn't it? The water came only the ankle deep, isn't it? Can you say anything about water other than what water feels? You cannot say because you don't know how water feels. You're not touched it yet. You're not soaked in it yet. You're not completely wet yet. You just know this is what water feels like. You know, a lot of us in a Christian walk, you know, we come to Christ only this much. I know about Jesus. That's good. But there's more about Jesus than that. You know? Right. Then the next verse says, Hallelujah, praise God. Again, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the water. The water came up to my... Who is bringing him closer? Holy Spirit. I want to tell you by the word of God, that Holy Spirit's desire that in 2024, you will grow deeper in the Lord. Five people are ready to get deeper. The rest are afraid to swim. You need to trust God to go in the water. Isn't it? Are we there? Hallelujah, praise God. 
In 2024, God is saying, come deeper. Come deeper relationship with me. You know, we are some newly married couple, you know. We just have so many first anniversaries. We also have some six monthly anniversaries around here. You know, maybe there was courtship, maybe a couple of years. And you thought that you know this person. You thought you know this person. And maybe two days into marriage, yeah, I never knew about this. Isn't it? I never knew that. You throw the towel on the floor instead of a laundry bin. I never knew that. Or you never knew you know, something good about them. Now you get married, now you come to know more about them. You know? You know? One year, two year, three year, four year. After a while, you think that you've figured out everything about them and they still surprise you. Isn't it? In a good way. Good way, okay? Good way. God is saying, come deeper with me in relationship. There is still more to our relationship than what you have experienced so far. You know, I don't want to settle down. You know, I read my Bible, I pray. I don't want to settle down. Consider that I'm doing what, I, what is in God says, come nearer. Come nearer. Come deeper with me. Come grow in relationship with me. You know, let us have, you know, let us have, you know, more intimacy together. Hallelujah. So if you're ankle deep, praise God for that. That at least you have tested what good is, God, how good God is. But God is inviting you to come to ankle deep water this season. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Are we there? Yes. If you're there yesterday, we talk about covenant and commitment. Yes. Like the covenant part. Commitment part. Okay, anyways. All right. Water came here. Then he says, Lord brought me even further and water came to my waist. That if you read further and further and further, the water came all the way to here that you could barely, barely, barely stand. He said, I cannot stand anymore. I need to swim. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to say to you and say to me and so to all those who are hearing right now, hallelujah, praise God. God desires, and I'm saying it with very confidence, hallelujah, and I'm, I can look in your eyes and say that God desires for you to grow deeper with God in 2024. He desires. His heart is for you. His heart is for, you know, his daughter, his son. His heart is for, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are and where you're walking with God, if you're too near, too far, it doesn't matter. But God says, I want you to grow closer in 2024. Are we there? Isn't it? You know, you know why God wants to do that? God wants you to experience his goodness. God wants to experience his fullness. God wants you to experience all that he has and he who is. Hallelujah. When you go closer to him, you would know him. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, Bible says, you know, book of, book of John talks about love. Isn't it? Hallelujah. There's a whole chapter, you know, and he talks about love here, there, and everywhere. If you read 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, he still talks about love. You know, he talks about love. And he said, John, like, you know, we don't even know you're married or not. How much you know so much about love? How much you know so much about love? And Bible says one thing. It says the disciple who was always leaning on Jesus in the bosom of Lord Jesus Christ. You know, John did not know any personal boundaries. So when he said he would lean on Jesus, he would just be, you know, just aligned to Jesus. You know, Prabhu would take the best always. That's what Bible says. You know what happened when he did that? He knew what love is. And that's why he keep writing about, guys, this is what love is. He's the one who says, God is love. And I could not know while being a fisherman and Jesus was preaching, I couldn't know that. I only came to know when I leaned on Jesus, came close to him, that's when I realized he's love. Are we there? Hallelujah. See, for a lot of us, this Bible, you know, is a book of information about God. It's not an experience to us because we try to gauge who God is by staying far. You can only learn a little bit from a preacher's mouth. Are we there? We can learn more about God when we go closer to Him. Hallelujah. We can know more about Him. We can love Him more. We can have intimacy with Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray, hallelujah. I urge, I beseech you, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, that each one of your heart's desire will be to go deeper with God in year 2024. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You did not expect maybe me to preach like that. You expect me to, you know, bless you. But let, we'll, we'll bless. We'll bless for sure. But I wanted to understand this is, what, this is what God has given to me. Let me tell you one more thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, how to grow in God. How to grow, you know, how to grow in God. You know, you know, you know we, we use this phrase, sky is the limit. limit. Isn't it? Praise God. If you, de- if you pray for five minutes every day, pray for seven. Yes. You grow in God. Are we there? Are we there? If you read your Bible for, you know, one chapter a day, start reading two. You grow in God. Is it? You know, if you're still troubling lifting your hands fully to God, at least start going here. You grow in God. If you're trouble fasting 40 days, 21 days, fast a day. You'll grow in God. Isn't it? Is it? Are, are we there? Are we there? You're trouble giving your tithe, and it is only 1%, start giving 4 or 5. You'll, you'll experience the goodness of God. Are we there? Praise God. We will grow in God. Uh, I, I'm going to say something, something very simply. See, sometimes this society has made following Jesus so uncool. But I think that's the best thing we can, we can do as a young or old to follow Jesus with all our heart. He's the lover of my soul. Nobody can love me like Jesus loves. Nobody can bless me like Jesus. Bless, hallelujah. So why would I not follow him radically, hallelujah, in this 2024? Are, are we there? Are we there? Praise God. You know, a lot of you have never read First Corinthians except on your wedding day, isn't it? Because somebody else read it for you. Some say, I don't even know that's what the passage was. But that's okay. That's 99% of the chances are that was the passage was. I wanted to grow in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. God says, come deeper. Come deeper. Come deeper. Come deeper. Come deeper. You can grow in faith. We don't trust God fully. Is it? We don't trust. You know, see, see, listen to this. We only trust God that if I pray, God gives it to me. That's what our faith is. I want to tell you, what if God doesn't give to you? What is our faith? My faith is, even if God does not give to me what I ask for, he'll still take care of me and he has a better plan than what I have. That's what faith is. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. See, Bible says, book of Hebrews says, Hallelujah. Abraham, when he went to the altar, he was about to sacrifice Isaac. And he says, even if I kill Isaac, God will raise him up. Isn't it? I have that. That is what faith is. A lot of us have to grow in faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not growing in faith. Only what God can do for me. That's not faith. The faith is, even if God doesn't do anything for me, is he my God? Even if God doesn't move a thing into your life, it has, do, you, do I still love him? That's what faith is. It's like, you, know, you know, we all tell the story, you know, especially when you're kids, you know, you tell the story of these three Hebrew boys. It's like, what were their names? Okay. We all know them as Shadrach, Mishad, Abednego, a.k.a. Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah. Han- that, were, that were the Hebrew names given by their mothers. This were the this way, the cool name given by Babylonians. Your, your kind of a name, isn't it? And there's this Hebrew boys were summoned and said, On this day you shall not worship your God and you shall worship this statue that is raised up by this wicked king. King goes, okay. The trouble was the people surrounding them. He says, if you don't do that, you will be thrown in the fiery furnace. Isn't it? And I meant, they said, when they meant fiery furnace, it was fiery. Isn't it? If anybody has worked in a pizza shop, they know what fiery furnace looks like. Or even if you've operated that oven, you know, oven that is there, it is not to stir the utensils, it is actually there to bake it. You know, if you operated that, you would know how hot it is. Isn't it? And these Bibru boys were about to be thrown. Bible says they heated up this fiery furnace seven times more. It was super hot. You know, if, if I think it, it would be around three to 4,000 cells centigrade or uh, Celsius, you know, it would be super hot that a metal can melt. And these Hebrew boys are about to be thrown. They begin one more chance. Like, are you going to renounce your faith? They say, our Lord shall deliver us. You know, that does, that is, that I don't find that exciting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also believe Lord shall deliver us. The next statement is more exciting for me. He says, even if my Lord does not deliver me, I will not bow down to king. I will not bow down to king. 
I will not bow down to king. You know, I want to invite you in a relationship with God that is not just based on exchange and getting things, but loving him genuinely for who he is. Are we there? Uh, you know, God wants a generation that is rising up that is not just looking after things for things from God. It's looking after things because God is the savior of their soul. He's the lover of themselves. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's a, if you're in Toronto, there's a, there's a Bible college called Tyndall Bible College or Tyndall Sam. Everybody know it? Okay. I give you one example about Tyndall. Now, Tyndall was an Englishman. He was a British. And at that time, before, before that time, there was a Bible only that translated into German and Latin. So only a few people can read it. The love of God through the word of God was not accessible to everybody. William Tyndall took an audacity to start translating in English. You know, the, the so-called church say you cannot do it. Okay, I'm going to just give you one second to introspect. So-called church says a lot of things you cannot do it. But they never say what you can do it. Isn't it? There's a freedom in Christ Jesus. You can do a lot of things through Christ Jesus. And, you know, he was, he, was, he was caught, he was persecuted. And, you know, the king brought him and someone is saying, you know, Tind William Tyndale, you know, you cannot translate the Bible, you're going to die. You have to renounce Jesus Christ, you have to renounce this translation. You cannot do that, it's not allowed, it's not possible. Isn't it? And the punishment was to be burned at stake. If those you don't understand, there's a wooden pole or a metal pole, a man would be tied half naked and they would burn them alive. Isn't it? And William Tyndale said, I will not renounce it. I will not renounce it. God did not came to deliver him. God did not say, you know, this fire came from heaven, the, the rope got loose, William Tyndale got away. There's nothing like that happened. No miracle happened there. William Tyndale was burned to death. But he did not renounce Jesus. Why? Because not only he trusted in what Jesus can do for him, he trusted him that he is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. May in 2024, you and I will grow in that kind of a love for him. Are we there? And when we do that, God blesses us. God blesses us. Let's go about going, uh, this was just, we were talking about going near to God. The same passage, we're going to go to verse number 8. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47, verse number 8. Praise God. Then he said to me, isn't it? This water flows towards the eastern region and goes into the valley. And this water enters the sea. Somebody say sea. sea. Okay. Now we know what the sea water is. Sea water is super salty, you know. And, 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 and this is that sea in fact he's talking about. And when this water reaches the sea, the sea waters are healed. Sea waters are healed. Sea water is not sweet. You cannot drink it. Sea water, you cannot use it. Even though you are in the ocean, you, it, it is almost unusable. Only certain aquatic life can survive through the sea water because of the, the salt level in it. But the moment this water goes into the sea, the sea water is made sweet. A lot of situations happened in your life in 2023, which was not so nice. It was not sweet. It was bitter. It was difficult. It was challenging. You know, even you could see the miracle of God, but you could not experience it in your life. You believed it, but you could not have that into your life. Even though you were in a water, but you could not drink that water because water was not made for you to drink. The Bible says the moment this water, the water from the presence of God comes into the same water which is around you, now this water is made sweet for us to consume. Are we there? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray when we grow in the presence of God, the water that flows from His presence makes things sweet around us. Whatever was bitter turned into sweetness. Whatever was sick, be healed in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because water has come from His presence. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Are we there? Yes. Praise God. Let me do a couple of things and we go towards closure. Next verse, please. Hallelujah. Then it, it, and then it shall be every living that moves in, into the... Okay. All right. And Bible says that everything that goes into this new water, isn't it? 
there will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed. Everything will live wherever river goes. Situation was dead, your body was dead, your job was dead, the finances were dead, emotions were dead, so many things were dead. When the waters from the living water, living water from the presence of God comes into your life and my life, things become alive again. I speak that 2024, you will have things coming alive into your life. Whatever enemy has killed, Jesus will made it alive in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Let me go and even if your passion for God has been killed, Jesus will made it alive in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse number 10, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to verse number 12 uh, quickly. Last verse. Thank you, Jesus. Along the banks of the river on this side will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Are we there? Somebody said trees. Okay, if you're in the church, I already told you what is, what is, the, what is the purpose of tree and the fruit. Okay, are we there? You know, uh, uh, if, if anybody has a garden and a fruit tree, you will know that. Is that? Let's say you have an apple tree in your orchard. Apple tree does not eat apples. Apple tree doesn't eat apples. Banana tree doesn't eat up bananas. But they grow this so that others will eat. Others will eat. God will make your life fruitful so that others are blessed. I want to tell you, you know, how do we know that our life is fruitful? Because somebody is blessed from our life. We are too busy blessing ourselves. But God says, when these rivers come from the presence of God, you will become blessing. You will become a, become a blessing to people, into your family. You will become a blessing to people in the church. You will become a blessing to people in your job. Wherever you go, you will be blessing. I'm not saying you'll be famous, but you'll be blessing. These two separate things. Okay, famous cannot be blessing. Okay, but just saying. All right. You can be blessing, hallelujah. You go and God gives you a right word to speak in right situation and relationship will be restored. You go, God will give you this anointing into your life that wherever you go, you know, the whole conversation will turn towards God. God will give you anointing wherever you go. You know, people say, you know, I have this problem. Can you pray for me? And when you pray, the result will be miraculous. Hallelujah. You will go and, you know, people will be attracted to you. It's like, I just feel like talking to you. I have this burden on my heart. I'm not able to share with anybody. But it looks like I am drawn to you. I want to share my burden. And they'll just share out their life within you. And then, you, you know, you would pray for them and God will start moving. And let me say, even if God starts moving, even if you pray for them, they will experience the shalom peace which they have never known. Why? Because you have become a blessing. Are we there? Are we there? Praise God. Can I charge you, church, in the beginning of 2024, hallelujah, let that be one of your goals, that I want to be a fruit-bearing tree that somebody is blessed out of my life. Somebody else is blessed. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just close it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray. Prayer and prophecy number three. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray and receive your fruitfulness and renewal for the year 2024. I receive grace to go deeper in you in Jesus name hallelujah praise God thank you Jesus thank you Lord how about we rise up hallelujah praise God thank you Jesus thank you Lord and you know worship team is going to bless you hallelujah but I also want to bless you with certain blessing hallelujah praise God and I want to bless you I already blessed you hallelujah that 2024 hallelujah praise God will be a year hallelujah of year of uh, growth and unity it will be a year of abundance and it will be a year of hallelujah abiding in the presence of God that will experience the fruitfulness and revival into your life hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I also want to give you one more blessing that God has given, asked me to proclaim over you. God will grant you authority. Somebody say authority. authority. Hallelujah. The book, of, uh, uh, the book of Matthew says, God says, I will grant you authority over all schemes of enemy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to speak blessing of authority over five areas of your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say five areas. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I proclaim, hallelujah, that you will have authority to have control over your own time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Time will not control us. We will control time. Hallelujah. Book of Ephesians says, redeem the time for the days are evil. Hallelujah. Praise God. You will have complete authority over your time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Second thing I proclaim over you, hallelujah, that you will have authority and honor in your home. Hallelujah. 
you will authority and you will have honor in your home the culture of authority and honor harbors fruitfulness harbors blessing hallelujah your authority in your places hallelujah into your homes you will be an honorable individual hallelujah your family will honor you hallelujah praise god third thing i want to say that you will have authority at the place of your work or at school hallelujah thank you jesus i am not saying position i am saying authority hallelujah Hallelujah Peter did not hold any positions hallelujah Paul was called bishop by us but not by nobody but they had the authority hallelujah praise god you will have authority hallelujah number 4 i want to tell you hallelujah that you will all have authority in your health situations hallelujah enemy can no longer torment you with your body sickness hallelujah enemy cannot harass you anymore hallelujah the spirit of infirmities cannot be around you anymore hallelujah you will have authority over it and will cast out every spirit of sickness in the name of lord jesus christ Hallelujah. The fifth area of authority, hallelujah. Your circumstances will not drive you. You will have authority over your circumstances. You'll be able to discern, hallelujah, what these circumstances are for and from and you'll proclaim authority over it, hallelujah. You'll walk by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and you will navigate through every season, every circumstances in your life, hallelujah, to the spirit of most high God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Let me pray, Father God, let blessing over them, Father God. I bless them in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Let 2024 be a year, Hallelujah, of Father God abundance, Father God. A year of breakthroughs, Father God. A year of fruitfulness, Father God. Hallelujah. A year of authority into this people's life, Father God. And Father God, I pray, Father God, Hallelujah. In this year, they will grow closer to you, Father God. The ankle deep people will become a knee deep, knee deep become waist deep, waist deep become Hallelujah, neck deep, Father God. But we all will grow in you, Father God. Your presence will empower us hallelujah strengthen us equip us hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah praise god hallelujah book of numbers chapter 6 says hallelujah god said to moses this is how you bless your people this is how what you do bless your people and you proclaim this blessing over them hallelujah praise god i'm going to speak and proclaim that blessing over you hallelujah praise god thank you jesus thank you father god hallelujah we going to speak that blessing over you praise god thank you jesus and before we speak blessing just just for the everybody to know you know how you receive blessing you receive blessing with open arms you know lord i want to receive it i want to re- there's a posture of asking god lord i'm ready to receive it hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus to receive thank you jesus yevre kha donai vish mere kha yae ra donai phana vele kha vikhune kha ye sa donai May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. On this 2024, I proclaim Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. May the love of the Heavenly Father. the grace of lord jesus christ and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all for your family for your generations for your surrounding for your jobs for your businesses for your health hallelujah for your families hallelujah be with you from this time forth and throughout 2024 in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen and amen hallelujah thank you jesus 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you all. May the shalom blessing of Yahweh be upon you. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. Stay back for the fellowship. If there's any prayer requests, do let us know. We are so blessed you are here. God bless you all. We love you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.